I'm going to bring on Lauren Good, who I used to work with and now works at The Verge, but she's still really awesome. So come on out, Lauren. Hi, everyone. They let me back. Um, our first product spotlight company has been around since 2011, uh, but until now it has primarily been focused around uh, augmented reality applications for branded content and advertising and that sort of thing. And what we're about to see today is, is really cool. So I'm very pleased to introduce Rish Mitra. He is the founder and CEO of Blipper. Rish. Hey, all right. Thank you so much for joining well, thanks us. Thanks for having me. Um, so while we get set up here with some props, um, let's talk a little bit about AR and what you guys have been up to up until this point. AR is definitely having a bit of a moment right now. Uh, what are you going to be showing us that's different from what you've been doing? Sure. I mean, augmented reality has been around for five, six years, and we've been around for four years. Uh, and so far, the story we've told so far is product uh, which is owned most by brand owners like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Nestle. The product's the biggest media in the world. A lot of people think newspapers, media, prints, media, televisions, media, but we forget that product. We're surrounded by products everywhere. Uh, and we made those products interactive for brand owners using our single browser for the physical world. So some of you may have seen a bee, a black bee at some point mm. on a product yeah. or in a magazine page, yeah. maybe in Cosmo, I'm yeah. not sure, yeah. um, and point your phone at it and then inf contextual information would pop up right in the app. Exactly. And uh, our prediction is the next generation of engagement where it's been a lot on flat surfaces is where augmented reality would meet artificial intelligence. And today we'll show you a flavor of that. Excellent. Let's go yeah. take a look. Yeah. All sure. right. So you're going to be using your iPhone app to do this? Yeah, so Blipper is platform agnostic. It works on uh, most, uh, most platforms on the phone, but it also works on majority of uh, glass-based wearables, but there aren't many of them in the market. So when you um, switch on uh, the Blipper app, uh, it literally starts predicting the world it sees and the moment it uh, gets a decent connection. Here we're getting a bit of a connection issue. That's always the thing with uh, live demos. Uh, there you go. It's kicked in. So uh, it what says it's, a, it's so it says it's an illuminated evening. It's bright. It's urban. Well, then we give you a uh, and it's uh, things are in motion. Uh, if I just point, oh. sorry, at you. I, don't worry. Nothing scary should appear. It says singer woman. Uh, singer beautiful stage people. Oh, that's really so cool. it's today it's got the brain of a, of a six-year-old. Uh, so that's where machine intelligence has reached, where it can real-time analyze whatever you're looking at, uh, and it can pick and describe as a five- or six-year-old can do. A six-year-old can more or less describe most things you see in the world, but it can't go specific. It can't say, like, your clothes from J. Crew or your car's Prius LX model. But amazing thing about machine intelligence is this took us two and a half years to reach this stage, but in, when 100 million users start using it and around 60 million users are using it today, it'll become from a six-year-old to 18-year-old in only 10 months. So the idea time. is that it, the product or the object that you're looking at no longer has to be embedded with any kind of code Nothing information. at all, yeah. You can point this at any object in the world. And yeah, this it'll, it'll classify it and categorize it. And this is using your 3G connection or 4G connection on your phone. So if I now uh, literally point at this um, Apple over here, mm -hmm. as you can see in the bottom tray immediately on the left side, it got it as an Apple. Uh, then I pointed at this banana uh, specifically. Uh, it should recognize it. Uh, there's no require of tagging. Uh, there you go, banana. And if I open it up, like, so you'll think, like, what's the purpose of this? It almost makes what we're calling it internet on things uh, rather than internet of things. What is it, recipes associated with it, places you can buy it. It's like light web. You, you're, you're walking around in the physical world. We are all very physical creatures. And you want to make spontaneous decisions about things you see. So uh, again, uh, it, it, it just going to just, it's very difficult to demonstrate this in a, in a controlled environment like a conference. But true way to appreciate it is actually 
you should use it in your kitchen or in a, in, on a real world environment. So again, pointing it at sushi, um, immediately gets it uh, as a sushi on the left hand corner. Again, strawberries over here. We'll, we'll sh we should see a response uh, straight away. I've got this random bowl of salad, and none of this has been programmed. It's all been picked up around the local store over here. It, it, it not only would pick up the salad as a whole, it starts analyzing each ingredient in it. So it picks up on the lettuce, on the tomato, on the carrot, on the cucumber, all literally and, and spontaneously. And if you go into each one of these bubbles, it'll give you a lot more information about that ingredient uh, based on where you are. What if, what if we throw a wild card at it? So what if you ended at that table over there? It'll, it'll, it'll literally, <laughs> it's too far, okay. but it literally should call it a white table. It says room. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we're in a room. It, and it, 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 it picks the rug, uh, which, yeah. What about like, like my wearable? What happens if you do that? <laughs> it's a very, very bulky Fitbit. Uh, let's see, it calls it a watch, yeah. It okay, that's, that's, yeah. Not, yeah. that's kid, not very far uh, off. But a kid, as a six-year-old, would call it a watch. There's your yeah. watch. Yeah. And, and so this is, I mean, this is something, what you guys are doing right now with this is not, it's not a new idea. I mean, a lot of companies, small startups, and then companies like Google are, yeah. are doing this, trying to do this right now. Um, so what are the unique challenges that you're facing as you're, you're trying to, I guess, identify everything in the world. I mean, it's a really big challenge. I mean, about, uh, if I put simply put it, Google indexed uh, the web. Uh, we're trying to, uh, the World Wide Web, and we are trying to index the world, which is a, a really, really humongous challenge in front of us. And the only way to go, it, go about is going from broad to narrow. So you start, you almost classify everything. And you have to, at some point, get contribution from the users. So today, a tremendous amount of brands and media owners and publishers are working with us. Majority of filmmakers, majority of uh, publishers like Time, Meredith, uh, and Condé Nast Group, like Cosmopolitan as well is in the room. <laughs> They're working with us. Uh, over 1,000 brands, and this is happening across three continents, and cataloging their stuff with us. So this is a great example where I pointed the phone at a, at a, at a random uh, movie poster, which is Dead Poets Society, uh, and, and you, can, you can check out uh, awards it has won, quotes from the movie, its reviews, Facebook page, info. But uh, this is not a tagged item. It's, it's, not, a, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a tagged item. But if you put it uh, on a tagged item, and this is how the Blipper logo appears on over 12 billion products, uh, SKUs of products on a monthly level. It, like this is, a, this is a random bottle of Dr. Pepper I picked up from the store. First of all, it analyzes this, that it's, it's, it's a bottle of something. Uh, and, and when it recognizes it, it usually recognizes much faster than it's happening right now. Um, let's, I'll give it- I've seen I'll this give, before in a Pepsi bottle. Like a person yeah. will pop out of it and tell you to drink more Pepsi, which I don't know if exactly. I agree with, but. I'll, so, again, I again, mean, I'm sorry, having connection where, problems, yeah. Where do you see this being used the most? I mean, it, it's, it's working on the smartphone now, right? And this is available for people to use now on the Blipper app. But yeah. we talk a lot about virtual reality, augmented reality, and it going on our bodies, our faces. Um, is, this, is your technology something that's eventually going to work with the use cases, Glass the use or cases HoloLens? Or? Really big. If, if you just take a very macro view at it, there are... Uh, if they're going to be 10 billion people on the planet by, by, by 2050. And there are a tremendous amount of gaps today between people's growing need for information and information available. We take it for granted that Google is the answer to a lot of questions. But let's not forget, like, three-sevenths of the world can't even read and write, and they're still curious about the world they see every day. Then there are several problems with the amount of doctors being produced in the world versus the amount of patients growing. The ratio is one doctor to 19,000 patients. Computer vision and machine learning will bridge the gap between many of worlds analyzing and information needs. So far, it's been very human-driven and database-driven. At some point, machines have to pick up on those databases and, and give you a lot more accurate information, analyze structures, and this is where our bigger view is. Mm -hmm. and, and Blipper, the browser, is just a manifestation of a public product for someone to walk on a street. If you're, if you're a dad or a mom and you're walking in a park and someone tells you what's that plant or what's that tree, very few people actually know what to type on Google. Like you want to type 
green leaf. <laughs> so instantly it can look at a plant and tell you this is that exact plant and this is how you get to know about it. So it's almost like a Wikipedia of physical world. At the same time, it gives you entertaining information which brands uh, are segueing into it. Well, we're running a little bit short on time, but we do have a very special guest that we are bringing out to help us test um, this product. And so I'd like to invite Milton on stage now um, because... So uh, this, is, this is Milton and puppy. my friend uh, Rory over here. And if we don't have you connection problems, we'll, we'll show you again. We are having a bit of a connection problem. So if I, if I point my uh, phone at, uh, at Milton's face, <laughs> it, it has recognized it as a dog already, but we want to do a little more than that. <laughs> on okay, come on, Milton, be a little more stable for me. A few more seconds. <laughs> there you go. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you look at the screen, it, it says, hey, it's a, it's, it's a pug. Uh, and, and it actually says it's a pug. Yeah, it's so a pug. So it recognizes the breed. It recognizes the breed. But did you, how many times did you have to do that with Milton before in order to teach no, it that it needed to be? No, it, it's not, I mean, not specifically Milton, but we have images of <laughs> Why didn't you say Milton? Uh, uh, <laughs> we, we have databases of everything in which the machines learn. And exactly how humans learn, machines learn the same way. You look at one thing for too Good long, job. exactly you know what you're looking at. And uh, uh, right. that's well, what you saw today. Thank you. Well, we briefly considered also bringing on stage that uh, toy that Joanna Coles mentioned earlier to yeah. see if they would recognize that. But I think we're, we're running out of time. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about what I would say. So, Rish, thank you so much for joining oh, thank us. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Cheers, guys. <laughs>